All right. Well, hello everyone. Nicole Boone here with News 13. Joining me this evening is teacher extraordinaire, I would say, Ron Satterley. He is a fifth grade teacher for Horry County Schools. He is at St. James Intermediate School, formerly at Burgess Elementary. You taught both of my children, so we know yep. each other well. We do. <laughs> All right, welcome to this interview this evening. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How about you? Fantastic. A couple of things, it's Teacher Appreciation Week. It is. So thank is. you for your service. I have, my administration actually had a, uh, they put a sign in our yard this morning with a, with a box of goodies at our front door, so that was really nice of them. That was really nice. They did, for the whole, they did that for the whole staff. So that was That's really nice. Great. Yeah, you guys need uh, the reinforcement to know how much people care about you, how much the students care about you, administrators care about you, the community care, uh, cares about teachers. You, you guys do so much just in a normal year, but this year even more extraordinary. So happy Teacher Appreciation Week. And I have, I've been waiting all day to say this. May the fourth be with you. Same to you. I have my <laughs> Star Wars shirt on. Yes, we did that for our Zoom meeting this morning. Um, uh, it was all, it was our math meeting. So it was all Star Wars related with Star Wars brain teasers and the kids dressed up. And so that was cool to see. So you always make truly learning fun and you're doing it even now with your Zoom meetings with your children. That leads me into our discussion about Wow, how things have changed when we no longer could have our children going into school buildings because of the coronavirus. Talk about what it's been like for a teacher through all of these changes. Um, definitely different. Definitely a once in a lifetime thing. I've been teaching for a long time now and I've never experienced anything like this before. And um, I must say, and I think my kids are starting to see that too, even the ones that say they don't like school too much, that they would much rather be back in the classroom than doing it this way. And like you said before, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make things as fun as I can. I, we had a Star Wars day going back in December when the new movie came out. Um, nothing like the one we did today. It was all online and I tried to make it the best I can. And that's, I think that's what everybody's doing. They're just trying to make the best of the situation we're in and we really have no control over it. So um, we're trying to do the best we can. I went and um, we had a contest with math and I went and delivered some prizes today and I get to see my kids a couple times a week when I go and bring them prizes and they were dressed in their Star Wars stuff. So we got some pictures and stuff, but it's nothing the same. I, I don't feel like I'm doing them justice as much as I could as if we were in the classroom, but I mean, it is what it is, so. It is what it is, and you're doing the best you can. So staying connected is really important, but I know that you probably feel like they're missing out on so much by not having a lot of hands-on experience, the ability just to be with them throughout the day. Um, you know, what do you think uh, is the key to keeping this going and, and helping them get through the remainder of the year and maintaining those those grades that they had before they were forced to stay home and you too. I think the biggest thing is letting my students know or our students know and their parents that we are there for them and any obstacles they run across they have to know that we're going to do whatever we can to try to help them and, and I'm honest with my kids I mean I'll tell them I, I might not have the answer for everything but I'm, I'm going to try I mean I was you know one of my girls wrote to me before and said, can we do a one-on-one -on -one video chat? Because she had some questions about one of the assignments. So, I mean, just keeping the lines of communication open and just, you know, anytime a parent, you know, uh, calls or texts me or whatever, or the students know that is, I'll do the best I can to answer. Um, but it's not perfect because we've never, we've never been down this road before. So. Absolutely. Well, we're lucky uh, for Horry County, you have done online learning, the distance learning before you were, you had done those things in other ways among the students. And probably for the most part, students have, you know, internet capability for the most part. So that was a blessing for Horry County Schools. For those that don't, 
across the state and the country. I'm, that's been a challenge for them. So I would say Horry County Schools has been better equipped to deal with something like this, but you really don't know what it's like until you are forced into it. I know that your students probably had some concerns. What are the, some of the things that they've told you along the way since this happened? You know, without, of course, it, but maybe being too yeah. personal, but you know, it gives the viewers an idea and followers of what they've actually been feeling during this time. I think one of the biggest things is um, them being away from their peers. I mean, yeah. we do we do a lot of group work, partner work, and you know, sometimes I I, I tell my kids that I, I don't I, I'm not to have that that much pride that it's like if if your classmate can teach you better to you than I can then go for it. And sometimes them hearing it from someone, one of their peers, the same age, sometimes they have a, a trick that might help them better. And I know a lot of kids have said they, they're missing that interaction with their peers. And like you said before too, about with technology, we are lucky because at our school, all the children were allowed to take home their Chromebooks. And I know I did a survey with, with all my parents to see Then I'm lucky enough that they do have, all have internet access and, you know, Horry County has done some ways with, um, I think, driving the bus around and having Wi-Fi in there and you could pull into the school parking lot and stuff. So, um, but it is tough because you don't know where they're coming from and, you know, if they have rides to be able to get to those locations and whatnot. But that's why going back to, again, just communication and, you know, even if it's not with technology, just making a phone call or, you know, them having paper options that they can do some of the work too. Yeah, I know what kind of teacher you are, and I know how much you care about your students. So I suspect that you have worried about them, you know, for various reasons with all of the changes. You, you think it would be easier being home and being able to sleep when you want to sleep and stuff, but it's like, I feel, and I know my colleagues are the same way. Um, even though we're at the house and you're technically teaching for like an hour or so with your Zoom meetings, I mean, I... I still like just two minutes before this interview started, I was still doing that interview with uh, that video conference with one of my students. So it's like, I feel like we're working harder. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just like, it's, it's I, like I said before, I'd much rather be in the classroom because I don't feel like I'm doing justice of what I could be doing in the classroom, but right. um, it is, it's, it's a big change and you got to do what you got to do. Right. Do you have, what, what's your concern, you know, as we, move through the summer, hopefully all of these health issues subside and, and we get better plans moving back. You know, there's a lot of talk with how schools may look when you return in August. Do you have any thoughts, concerns, or uh, anxieties about what it may be like? I have anxieties about everything. Oh, I know. Don't um, we all? <laughs> I, I don't, I mean, I, I can't predict the future. Sure, I know. Um, but but we've, you know, my wife and I, we've already talked and my wife works in, um, at the district office too. And we've had these conversations, just what would school look like? And I, I gotta tell you, it's going to be tough because I teach fifth grade. So fourth grade's coming from next door at Burgess and I don't know a majority of those kids. So it's like, if we had to start a school year, if it turned out that this keeps going on and we have a school year that's, uh, you know, we don't start it on time or we got to continue the on learn, uh, online learning. I, I, I don't, I don't have an answer for you for that because it does worry me to, to say normally, you know, I feel like something that's very important to me is trying to commute, uh, start a, like a family like atmosphere in our classroom. And you can't have that if you're doing it online and you don't get to meet these children face to face. So I am hoping, I know things are slowly starting to open again, but I also know by the same fact by, putting hundreds and hundreds of kids together in a school, that might be not something that's ready to go after the summer, but I am keeping my fingers crossed that right. we get to start like normal. Right, we're all hopeful that, you know, there will be a safe way to do things and children will be able to go back to school um, because those are some of your best memories and those are where your foundation and life happens with your school, your teachers, and the school spirit and the fun that comes with it as well while also learning. And I know that is your hope and goal. You know, as we close, I appreciate you giving uh, our 
viewers and followers a glimpse of what it's like to be a teacher during COVID-19. What are your final thoughts as we get through this school year, your hopes for the future, and maybe what have you learned from all of this? Um, I think I'll start with the thing I learned is never take any day for granted because, you know, the memories you make in the classroom, I mean, seeing like my, my children that I had seven years ago, they're about to graduate now and they're not going to have their normal graduation or they didn't get to play their last year of sports. And I've been trying to reach out to them and let them know that I haven't forgot about them because that's the thing with, you know, building relationships. But, um, it's, it's not the same when you're doing online compared to, like I said before, with the Star Wars Day. You know, if you ask the children, take a poll, which Star Wars Day was better, the one in December or the one we just did today? I'm sure they had a lot more fun when the news was there and we all got to dress up in front of each other and just got to share that time together. Before it's a lot different when you're just sharing it online with each other. And Yeah, before you answer the couple other que parts of the question, I wanted to say you are amazing when it comes to nurturing the relationships with your students. Both of my kids had you in fifth grade and they would come, when the seniors come back and walk the halls for senior day, you were the, one of the first people they want to get to because you've been consistent with staying in touch with so many of your students. And that's the thing that's so important with teachers and students is those relationships because you make an impact on them lifelong. And so from from my family to yours, I wanna thank you for the nurturing, the relationships you did with my children. And I know so many other parents feel the same way. So nurturing those relationships, so important. Thank you for that. And your hope moving forward. <laughs> well, uh, you saying that too, I have a, I have a sign in the classroom. Um, actually, one of my old students gave it to me and it's like a picture frame with their pictures in it and whatnot. And it says, uh, um, a child might not remember what you taught them, but they'll always remember the way you made them feel. Amen. And I just feel like if you build that relationship, that bond with each other, um, kids will walk through a wall for you and you do the same for them. And that's, Absolutely. that's the part of teaching I miss the most. And I'm, like I said, I'm trying to do it the best I can. I'm trying to go out and visit kids. I know we got to keep our distance, but just kind of, if they've just sticking their head out and saying, Hey, and, and going back to just showing them that you're, you're there for them and, whether we're in school or we're all at home, that we're still all in this together and yeah. we're going to try to help each other out. And your hope moving forward? Uh, that this doesn't go on too much longer <laughs> and we can go back to the way things were. Yeah, absolutely. So we can get back to loving on I'm the children, you know, the high fives, the hugs, the you can do this. The Yeah, it's like now you got to think twice about shaking someone's hand or fist pumping somebody or I'll be the elbows yeah, we've been, we've been doing a lot of these yeah right. whatever that might, that might be the new thing now who knows well listen i want to thank you for being with me uh, tonight to sort of give an insight of what it's like to be a teacher during all of this and i know you represent so many teachers across the state and country that feel the same way. They're missing their students. They're hoping for a, a better, brighter uh, year 21, 2021 yeah. and, um, and for students to get back and get in the classrooms and start learning the traditional way again. My friend, I thank you. I thank you. All right. Thank we'll you see you the next time. Absolutely. All right. Take care.